do you want to be able to generate AI images totally for free? Well, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how you can do that step by step using Comfy UI to have a really nice interface and be able to generate images with Flux Context as well as other models too. We're going to break it down step by step for how to install Comfy UI, how to install Flux, some best techniques around prompting and be able to get the outputs within Comfy UI as well. And if you've got a Mac, I've got a secret trick that we're going to use to get those outputs as well. So let's jump in and see exactly how we're going to do that. First things first, we're going to come across to Comfy UI, which can be found here and I'll include the link below so it's nice and easy. We've got a couple of other videos on the channel that cover exactly how to use this and much more in our community too. We're going to press download to make sure that we get all set up correctly. I'm going to use the download for Mac. That's going to bring us through to here and we're just going to download it. So we've got that starter file as we can see at the top right hand side here to make sure that we're all set up. Once this is downloaded, I'll show you the next couple of steps. Once you downloaded it, you should get a screen like this and just pull it across to applications. This is going to go through and install Comfy UI for us. Whilst this is installing, you're going to need around 30 gigabytes free at least to be able to install Comfy UI, all of the different modules we need for that, plus the different files required for Flux AI and some of the different image generation tools. Now that's all set up, we'll be able to load up Comfy UI. Once you load it up, it should look something like this. You need to press get started. Now, if you're using a Windows machine, it will say NVIDIA on the left hand side here. I'm using a Mac, so that's why we've got the Apple Metal Performance. And I'll show you how to get around some of the errors a little bit later on for the performance side. You can also go through and turn on CPU mode as well. If you've not got as much of a powerful GPU to be able to run it locally. Let me know as well if you want us to cover how you can run Comfy UI on platforms like RunPod in case you've got a Mac. We're going to go through, set it all up to install. We can go through and just do next for all of these and then press install. Now it's going to start installing Comfy UI for us. This will take a little while to go through and do. So I'll see you at the end of it once Comfy UI is all installed and loading up. So there we go. Once it's all installed, you should have a screen that looks like this in front of you. This is going to be the home page to be able to use everything within Comfy UI. This is how we can set up from some templates. So we've got some image generation, image to image. We can use LoRa for lots of control over our images. We've got in painting, out painting. We've got some of the models popping up here. We can also come down to the video side. Make sure to check out my other videos on the channel. They go into detail around how to use some of these. If we're going to come up though, we're going to come across to the flux model. But if you wanted to use some of these other ones for image generation, you could do that as well. Now, if you want to go through and generate an image, we're going to come back to flux across to Schnell. And then we're going to download this module here and wait for it to install so that we can go through and use it to generate some images. So I'll wait for this to install and then I'll show you how we can generate some images from scratch. So there we go. We're now all downloaded so we can start generating some images. We're going to come out of here. Now this is how Comfy UI looks to be able to generate the images. It's a much easier interface than going through trying to use the terminal and other ones out there. So how does it work? Well, on the left hand side here, we've got the checkpoints. So this is going to be loading in the model for us to be able to use. We're going to have our positive prompt in here and this is where you're going to input the instruction or the prompt to be able to get the output you really want but how should we structure the prompts well we're going to run through that quickly now so what we want to be able to call out is the subject i.e what's in the image we also want to call out the style of that image as well so do you want it to be maybe 3d pixel art anything like that to be able to get the output the next one here is all around the modifiers so these are any points around the visual details so your camera controls the lighting all of these different parts to get the output specifically what you want it to be now the other part as well is our negative prompting so this is a bit more advanced this is also we're going to tell the ai what we don't want to be included 
So, for example, if you want to have a really good human realistic face, body structure, everything like that, we want to basically say the opposite to the negative prompt. So we want to make sure that it's not including any deformed structures. It's a realistic human structure and much, much more in that space. We're going to close that down though. We can also see here how we're going to adjust the size of the image if we need to do that. We can also see the case sample. So this is how we're going to be able to go through and adjust the output that we get. So for example here, we've got the steps and the way that this works is the higher the number of the steps, the better the quality of the output is likely to be. The reason for this is because we cover it much more in our AI masterclass in the community, but it's all around the denoising process, i.e. the way that AI image and video generation works. It's going to start off with a base of lots and lots of different pixels and gradually layer up your request over and over time so that we can get the output. Now, to bring that to life, let's run through a quick example to see how it looks. So what do I mean by that? Well, as you can see in the background here, what we're basically saying is that if we've got 10 steps, it's like having a tent. We've got a nice light framework and it's going to produce somewhat of a good output for us. But what if we want to take it to the next level? That's where maybe we've got the fabrication of a building, you know, it's starting to have the foundations of maybe a skyscraper. That would be our 50 steps. Now, if you want a really good image, lots of detail, all of these different parts, that's where we could go up something like 100 steps and that would be your Empire State Building. It would have all of the different glass, floors, coffee machines, everything that you think of to get the best outputs. So the rest of it in here we can add if we want to, but that steps is the key part. So all we need to do to make it run is come down the bottom and press run. As you can see in the background, it's now going to load in the model for us to be able to use. We're then going to be able to use our positive prompt, load up the case sampler, start generating that image, you'll have a green bar that starts to get loaded across here and you can check the progress. And then we're going to get our output image on the right hand side here. Wherever that green box around it is, that's going to be the current step of the process we're on. So we're just going to wait for this to go through and then I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Now, if you get this error on the screen, that's absolutely fine. It's probably because you're using a Mac. The reason that we've got this is because a lot of the models out there have been optimized for more of the NVIDIA, the GPUs that come through from that side. So we're going to need to make a change to the configuration file, as you can see here, just to update our Comfy server launch so that it's going to make it use the FP16 version and the CPU versus the FP8. So what we want to do is copy this. We then want to come through and find the configuration file. So normally it's in Comfy UI, down to user, through to default. We then want to find the Comfy settings. So we're going to open this with text edit. So there we go, it's now all loaded up. Now what we're looking to do is, as you can see here, we're literally just going to replace it with that command that I've put down below. Press save and that should be all ready to go. We're then going to come through and restart our Comfy UI instance. So there we go. It's now gone through and made all of those changes for us. And if we come across, as we can see there, we've now got a fantastic image that we didn't have to pay for at all. It was all done locally on our computer. And considering how far AI image generation has come, I think this looks fantastic. And to have that ability on our computer locally for free, I think it's a total game changer. Now let's run through how we can use Flux Context to be able to generate some images as well. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of videos around AI and automation. If you want to take your learning to the next level, make sure to check out our community. We've got lots of content in there. We're coming to Flux. I'm going to use the Flux context dev and then basic. We can also use here the Flux dev FP8. So what we're going to do is click on this. You'll see that it will load up the workflow in the background here, which is that nice easy interface. But we need to go through and download these files. And that's why you need the file space to be able to do this. So I'm going to press download. And then we're going to wait for all of those files to download before I show you how to get it all set up. So there we go. We're now all downloaded and ready to go. I'm just going to come through and reinstall it to get the latest version. So I'll see you after that.
So there we go, we're now all updated and ready to go. And now we're able to generate as many images as we want. As we can see here, we've got the ability to load up our different models, and this is everything that we need to be able to generate it. So as you can see down here, we're going to be able to change the different clip models, the diffusion models, and much, much more. Make sure to check out my other videos on the channel that cover how to use the different models that we've got. So as you can see here, Hydroom, Hind Video, Flux, SD3, many more for you to be able to use. We're going to come back to Flux though. Now, if we come down here, this is where we're going to be able to input our images. So as we can see on the left-hand side here, we've got the first image ready to go. If you want to activate this, just do Control and then B, and that will activate it or deactivate it. As you can see here, it's going to use the primary image as the left one or the right one, depending on the settings you fix here. And we can upload it. So for example, if I click upload here, and then I import one of the images we've got, as you can see there, it's able to pop up at the bottom. You'll see that there's lots of notes in here as well that will just help you guide yourself around. In here, this is going to be the prompt to be able to generate the image. If we come a bit further up, as we can see here, we've got some conditioning. That's not as major for most of you using it. But what is key is the case sampler. So this is going to be how we can influence the quality of the output that we're going to get. If you want consistency, that's where you want to have that seed image to be the exact same every single time. That's going to increase the likelihood of you getting a similar output versus it being random each time. So in this case, I'm going to come down and say, make the sky red instead of blue. We'll be able to come down, run the image, and now it's going to go off and hopefully change that for us. We're going to get to the preview of the image down the bottom here. We're going to start loading in the different models that we're going to be using to generate this image. And that's denoted by the green box around here. It just tells you what step we're at in the process. As you can see here, it's going through loading in our prompt now. So that request we've given it, and it should come up to the case sample next to be able to go through and generate the image for us. So there we go, it's now starting to do the key sampler. And what this means is we should have a green bar that starts to appear up the top here. And that's gonna show you how far along it is in generating that image for us. It's worth noting that with a MacBook and some of the lower GPU or VRAM computers out there, it is gonna take you much longer to generate the output than using something like Replicate to generate the output or we can look to use platforms like runpod.io to actually go through and use a virtual server with a bit more of a powerful graphics unit, but still only pay for what we use so it can be cost efficient. Let me know if you want to see a video on that and we can go through and cover it in another one. We'll just wait for this to come through. I'll show you loading it the key sampler and then show you the output that we're able to produce. So there you go. As you can see, that green bar is starting to come through and up the top, You'll also be able to see that it's got that 5%. So we know it's 5% of the way through generating that image. So we'll just wait for this to come back and then I'll show you what it looks like down here. So there we go. We've now got the result back after a little while. It's not quite understood the request that we gave it, i.e. just the sky to go through. But that's where, as mentioned, as you go through and increase the steps, you'll be able to get that better output. Now, this is where it's really key to understand the cost versus time side. So for example here, this does take a very long time to generate locally on my MacBook, but what we're able to do instead is use something like Replicate to get it a bit faster and still pay $3 per thousand images. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you want to see with Comfy UI, or like I mentioned, using platforms like RunPod to generate it in a cloud, or if there's another platform you have that's really interesting, let me know below and we can definitely look to do a video on it. Stay tuned for more around AI automation and have a great day.